we are taking question and answer on uh, thermodynamics a geyser heats water flowing at the rate of uh, 3 liters per minute from 27 degree centigrade to 77 degree centigrade so the difference is around 50 50 degree and this is the flow rate if the geyser operate on a gas burner it is operating on on a gas burner what is the rate of consumption of fuel if uh, its heat of combustion is this much so what all is given let us write them water is flowing at the rate of 3 liter per minute and the geyser heats the water raising the temperature from 27 to 77 degree centigrade that is initial temperature is this one so 27 final temperature is 77 this one and the uh, rise in temperature so let us take t2 minus t1 which is equal to 50 degree centigrade to 77 minus 27 the heat of combustion is also given let us write here 4 into 10 to the power 4 and the specific heat of uh, water we already know this value we are aware of so now we know that the mass of flowing water is 3 liter per minute let us convert this liter into gram so this will be 3 into 1000 10 to the power 3 that means so 3000 gram per minute the total heat being used delta q is equal to mc delta t m is known to us 4.2 c is known to us and delta t 50 is known to us just put it here you get this value this is this is the total heat use but we need to know the rate of consumption so this is this joule per minute and what we have here in the question it is given that the uh, heat of combustion is this much is this heat of combustion has to be divided to the total heat being used so this is the rate of consumption what amount of heat must be supplied to this kg 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 kg of nitrogen at room temperature to raise its temperature by 45 degree centigrade so delta t t temperature change is 45 degree centigrade and this is the kg of nitrogen molecular mass is also given the r is also given so the mass of nitrogen which is given in kg let us convert this mass, this one convert it into gram the rise in temperature delta t is 45 degree centigrade the molecular mass of n2 is also given as 28 the universal gas constant is also given as 8.3 so what is the number of moles which is simply small m by capital m small m is 20 gram and capital m is 28 so 20 by 28 this is n we are we are going to use this n in the later this discussion then the molar specific heat at constant pr pressure for because we are talking about constant pressure what is the molar specific heat at constant pressure for nitrogen the cp which is c and p p sub is for constant pressure so specific heat molar specific heat 7 by 2 r r we know this is 8.3 so 7 by 2 into 8.3 this gives you this value now total amount of heat which is supplied heat to be supplied the relation will be delta q equal to n cp delta t this n is small m by capital m we just wrote that here so this is the value you know you have to put this value this comes around 0 0.714 cp is we just found out 29.05 and delta t is of course given in the question 45 and this is the final value this is the amount of heat to be supplied is 933.38 joules explain why two bodies at uh, different temperature t1 and t2 if bought in uh, thermal contact do not necessarily settle to the mean temperature t1 plus t2 by 2 see for this to happen the bodies have to have you know same same uh, characteristic so what is happening here is uh, it is not always true that it has to be exactly between t1 and t2 or t1 plus t2 by 2 average so when two bodies at different temperature t1 and t2 they are brought in uh, thermal contact the heat flows uh, from the body at higher temperature to the lower temperature this we know uh, till the point we ach achieve the equilibrium so the temperature of both the bodies they become equal but the mean temperature is not is only achieved when thermal capacities of both thermal capacities of both the bodies are equal this is very important if thermal capacities are equal then only we say that this is going to happen the next is the coolant so coolant in different plant like chemical or nuclear plant should have high specific heat uh, this this is the liquid which is used to prevent uh, different parts of a plant from getting too hot 
that is why it is called as coolant so the coolant in this plant they they should have high specific heat why because uh, this higher the specific heat of the coolant higher is the heat absorbing capacity and that is exactly what for this coolant is being used so a liquid having a high specific heat is the is best for being used as a coolant in either nuclear chemical or any other plant where this coolant is desired and this uh, would definitely prevent different parts of plant from getting too hot air pressure in a car tire increases during driving yes because the temperature increases therefore therefore the air pressure increases so when the car is motion the air temperature inside the car increases and uh, why because of the motion of the air molecules we know by charles law the temperature is directly proportional to the pressure p is directly proportional to t so if the temperature inside the tire will increase the pressure will also increase that is how you might have heard about uh, tire being burst you know they are bursting when they are on uh, highways because the car is moving very fast 100 120 130 kilometers an hour it is traveling so this uh, creates a lot of heat generate heat inside the tire and it may burst the next is uh, the climate of harbor town is more temperate than that of a town in a desert at the same latitude so see if this is a town and here this is this is all water this is all water so what is happening that whatever you know season is there this water is going to control that it will not make this area too hot or too cold well this is not possible when you are living in areas where there is no water or there is no um, water bound say evaporation condensation etc going on that is why a harbor town harbor means where the harbor means there is some sea or some water uh, you know abundant water resource so harbor town has more temperate climate without the extremes of cold heat and cold as i just suggested than a town located in a desert at the same latitude desert has no water so because the relative humidity in harbor town is more than that it is in desert town a cylinder with a movable piston contains three moles of hydrogen at standard temperature and pressure the walls of the cylinder are made up of heat insulator and the piston is insulated by having a pile of sand on it so by what factor does this pressure of the gas will increase if the gas is compressed to half its original volume so uh, what we will see here is the cylinder is being said that it is completely insulated from surrounding that means there is no heat exchange that means there is the process is purely adiabatic so initial pressure p1 in final pressure p2 let us assume this initial volume v1 final volume v2 here the ratio of specific heat gamma is 1.4 this we know by theory we have learned it in uh, theory so for an adiabatic process we have p1 v1 to the power of gamma p2 v2 to the to, to the power of gamma now the final volume this v2 is actually half of v1 so v1 by 2 final volume is compressed to half of its initial volume that is v1 v2 can be written as v1 by v1 by 2 so let us put here in place of v2 v1 by 2 so we are putting v1 by 2 and when we take the ratio of p2 by p1 it gives you 2 to the power because this eventually gets cancelled this becomes 2 to the power gamma gamma is 1.4 so 2 to the power 1.4 this gives you 2.639 the pressure increase by a factor of 2.639 in changing the state of gas adiabatically from equilibrium state a to another state b the amount of work is equal to 22.3 joule is done on the system c the work is done on the system not by the system this will come into picture if the gas is taken from state a to b via a process in which the net heat absorbed by the system is 9.35 calorie how much is the net work done by the system in the latter case we have to take 1 calorie as 4.19 joule so in this case the work done on the system while the gas changes from state a to state b is 22.3 joule so this is an adiabatic process so what is the change in heat because it is adiabatic process the change in heat is zero delta q is zero delta w is 22.3 but 
we we have to take it as minus why because the work do, work is done on the system not by the system so from first law of the thermodynamics we can have delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w we know that this is first law of thermodynamics now this delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w this delta u is the internal energy of the gas so we want delta u we have to push this on the left hand side so delta q delta u will be equal to delta q minus delta w this is 0, this is minus 23, 22.3, so this gives you plus 22.3, delta u becomes plus 22.3 joule. So when the gas goes or changes its state from state A to state B via process, the net heat absorbed by the system will be 9.3 to 35 calorie which is given in the question. So 9.35 into 4.19 we are multiplying because we want to convert this calorie into joule. Now this delta Q equal to delta U plus delta, uh, this is delta W sorry. So delta W will be again what? This will be delta Q minus delta U, delta Q minus delta U. Now delta U you know, this one, delta Q you just found out, put it here, subtract them, you get 16.88. This is the, this is amount, this amount of work is done by the system. Two cylinders A and B of equal capacity are connected to each other via a stop cock. So we have a stock cock in between. So a, a, a contains a gas at standard temperature and pressure and B is completely evacuated. The entire system is thermally insulated. So there is no heat transfer in and out. The stop cock is suddenly opened. We have to answer these following. What is the final pressure of the, or the gas A and B? What is the change in the internal energy of gas? What is the change in the temperature of the gas and do the intermediate states of the system lie on PVT surface? So let us see one by one. This becomes 0.5 by 0.5. Here it, was, it is atmosphere, one atmosphere pressure, but suddenly uh, as you open the cock, say this is the one portion, this is the another portion, and you open the cock, the gas, half of the gas goes here or they distribute themselves. And because there is... Uh, Nothing happening from outside, the internal energy is zero, that there is a change in temperature, no, there is no change in temperature, it will remain as zero and this uh, intermediate surface of this system will not lie on PVT surface because everything is random. We will give an explanation of all these. So first is, see, the volume available to the gas, see, it was here. Now volume, when it is, this top cock is open, the volume is doubled. The volume is double, it can come here, this between cylinders A and B. So since the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure, the pressure will, will decrease to one half of the original volume. And since the, since the internal pressure of the gas is told to be one atmosphere, because it is going to be half, it will be 1 by 2, that is 0.5 atmosphere. Second is the internal energy of the gas can change only when work is done by system or on the gas. So work is, when the work is done by gas, there is nothing, there is no work done by gas. When the work is done on the gas, there is no work on the gas. So since there is, so in this case, no work is done by the gas or on the gas, the internal energy of the gas will not change. The next part was, uh, because since no work is done by gas during the expansion of the gas, it is just going and moving from this point to this point, the temperature of the gas is not going to change. PVT surface. Now, this is a free expansion case. The given process is a case of free expansion. It's uh, rapid and it cannot be controlled. So, the intermediate states, they do not satisfy this gas equation. Since they are in non-equilibrium state, they will not lie on PVT surface of the system. A steam engine delivers uh, this joule of work per minute and services this joule of heat per minute from its boiler. What is the efficiency of the engine? How much heat is wasted per minute? So work done by the steam engine per minute is given. Heat supplied by the boiler is also given. We need to know the efficiency. So we just need to divide uh, this with this value. So we get the eta W by H 5.4 by 3.6 to the power of sorry, proper powers we get 0.15. So this is the first answer. Our efficiency is 15%. 0 0.15 is actually equal to 15 by 100, which is equal to 15 into 1 by 100, which is 15%. Now the amount which is being wasted, you 
this is the work done by the system permanent this is heat supplied so this is higher and this is lower take the difference the difference is this much 3.06 into 10 to the power 9 so this is the amount of heat wasted per minute 3.06 into 10 to the power 9 an electric heater supplies heat to a system at a rate of 100 watt if the system performs work at rate of 75 joules per second at what rate is the internal energy increasing so here the heat is supplied to the system the rate is 100 watt the heat supplied is q which is 100 joule per second and uh, the system performs at rate 75 joule per second so work done this w is 75 joule per second and we know from the first law of thermodynamics q is equal to u plus w uh, we want to know the u that is the internal energy so it will be q minus w q is q is 100 w is 75 take subtraction 25 joule per second that is watt so 25 watt so the internal energy of uh, this electric heater increases at a rate of 25 watt a uh, thermodynamic system is taken from an original state to an intermediate state by the linear process shown here its volume is then reduced to the original value from e to f see this is e this is f so from here to here uh, by an isobaric pr uh, process we have to calculate the total work done by the gas from d to e e to f so d to e d to e e to f so eventually we have to find the area of this triangle this is the question here so the total work done by gas gas from d to e and e to f is the area of triangle def this is the area of triangle so if this is d and this is say e and this is f f so this is half into base ef into altitude de so what is this uh, d de de is 600 minus 300 so this becomes 300 what is this from here to here it is 5 minus 2 so it will be 3 so it will be half into 300 into 3 so this is the value so the change this 6 100 minus 300 from here to here uh, this pressure difference and the change in volume this through 5 to 2 this is 5 minus 2 3 half into base into altitude that is half into 6 this 300 into uh, 3 so you get 450 joules so the total work done by the gas from d to e to f is 450 joules our refrigerator is to maintain eatables kept inside 9 uh, at 9 degree centigrade if the room temperature is 36 degree centigrade we have to calculate the coefficient of performance so the temperature inside the refrigerator 9 degree let us convert it into kelvin you just have to add 273 okay and uh, again this is the temperature room temperature so just add 273 the coefficient of performance t1 by t2 minus t1 t1 by t2 minus t1 we know that this is the coefficient of performance this is t1 this is t2 to put the values you get 10.44 and the coefficient of performance of the this refrigerator in this case is 